The following program is brought to you in living color. Hi, and welcome to another installment of This Week in TV History. I'm Tony Figueroa, the child of television. You can read my blog, childoftelevision.blogspot.com, or you can listen to me on TV Confidential, a radio talk show about television. This week in TV history, we will talk Laverne and Shirley, which premiered January 27, 1976, and aired all the way to May 10, 1983. Now, this particular show has two characters, Laverne DeFazio and Shirley Feeney, played brilliantly by Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams. Now, they were introduced in the episode of Happy Days called A Date with Fonzie. Richie is in a dating slump. Fonzie decides to fix the problem by having a double date with two girls that were sure things, let's call it, uh, Laverne DeFazio and Shirley Feeney. Laverne was Fonzie, Fonzie's date, and Shirley was Richie's date. And uh, later in the episode, there's some brilliant physical comedy with Cindy Williams and Ron Howard. And it certainly laid out the blueprint for what would be Laverne and Shirley. Now, Laverne and Shirley appeared in a couple more episodes of Happy Days and then launched their own show. Now, the show was set on what would be considered the other side of the tracks. The Cunninghams and the Happy Days gang, they were in the middle class section of Milwaukee and... Yeah, Laverne and Shirley were not. They were, again, the other side of the tracks. Uh, they were employees of the Schatz Brewery. They worked as bottle cappers. Laverne's father owned a place called the Pizza Bowl, a pizza parlor and bowling alley. That was their regular hangout. But most of the time, you saw Laverne and Shirley in their basement apartment. That was eventually owned by Miss Edna Babish, who was played by Betty Garrett. Laverne's father was played by comedian Phil Foster, who uh, Gary Marshall, the creator of the show, used to write jokes for Phil Foster way back in the day. The other cast member was Eddie Mecca, uh, who played Carmine Ragusa, who was not only a song and dance man trying very hard to have his dance studio in operation, he was also a former Golden Globes, uh, Golden Globes, Golden Gloves boxer. <laughs> so... Uh, you had this wonderful ensemble. What differed them from Happy Days, again, was a lot of the physical comedy. And the characters were immediately adored by the American public. Now, Laverne and Shirley had two characters that allowed these two blue-collar women to have a lot of class. And that was Lenny and Swiggy. Now, Lenny and Swiggy were played by Michael McKeon and David L. Lander. Uh, they actually created these two characters prior to Laverne and Shirley. And uh, they were created when they were studying at Carnegie Mellon, and they also had an improv group called The Credibility Gap. In one article, it was described, yeah, these two give Laverne and Shirley class. So the show went on for five seasons where they were still in that basement apartment, working at Schatz Brewery, getting into all sorts of adventures. And then for the 1980 season, that fall, they decided to do a major shift they relocated the show to Burbank, California, and jumped ahead a couple of years. So they were no longer in the same timeline with the Happy Days. So they jumped up from the early 60s to 1965. Now, a part of the move was because Frank and Edna, who had married, moved to Burbank and opened a Cowboy Bill's Western-themed restaurant. And Laverne and Shirley lost their jobs as bottle cappers. They decided to move to California and they coerced Lenny and Squiggy to drive them over in a used ice cream truck. Once they arrived, Lenny and Squiggy decided they were going to stay in California as well and become roommates in their new apartment. So the show got a lot of critical acclaim, too. Uh, they were recognized for, first of all, showing two blue-collar women living alone. That had not been seen on television, and their physical comedy style was compared to Lucille Ball and Vivian Vance, or Lucy and Ethel, and I love Lucy. There were conflicts on the show, stories about how they would argue over who got so many jokes between Cindy Williams and Penny Marshall. A very difficult circumstance, I'm sure, since Penny Marshall's brother is the producer on the show. 
Uh, it was said that if you eavesdropped on the Happy Days set, it was always very nice, very calm, very friendly, and a uh, little friction over there at Laverne and Shirley. But you can watch these shows on MeTV. I have to throw in my own personal perspective because uh, when I was in junior high at Bancroft Junior High School in Hollywood, when school would let out on a Wednesday or a Friday, I would run over to the Gower Gate of the Paramount Studio lot and try to catch a final dress rehearsal of Laverne and Shirley, Happy Days, or Mark and Mindy. Happy Days and Mark and Mindy were on Fridays, Laverne and Shirley's were, were, they would do the rehearsal and then eventual taping on Wednesdays. I love to watch the rehearsal because it was the first time it would be done before a live audience. And that's where you would see what jokes were working, what jokes weren't, and then what was shot later on, which would be the actual show that airs. And you can see a lot of changing, a lot of adjusting to see how they you know, go off with the audience response. Now, one thing I noticed when I would go to see Laverne and Shirley, as opposed to any other show, the characters of Lenny and Squiggy, David Lander and Michael McKeon, they would always be in character when they were on set. So even if somebody addressed them as Michael and David, they would always respond as Lenny and Squiggy. You never saw those two out of character. And since they were very pivotal in the episodes that I watched, they were very funny to watch these guys because uh, they actually had one scene where they were fighting. A curtain would be moved away. You'd never see them get prepared, set up, or anything like that. They were hidden behind a curtain, moved away. They were full-blown in fighting. <laughs> and reacting to the audience's responses as well. I mean, they were incredibly talented performers. This was around the time also they released their album, Lenny and the Squig Tones. Uh, watching that was an incredible process. And by the way, uh, both Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams did wind up directing various episodes before the show went off the air. In the final season, when they were in Burbank, a big shift happened. Cindy Williams was pregnant and decided to leave the show. I will spare the details on that. And Laverne carried the show for the rest of the run. Or as my sister referred to the show, uh, Laverne and Shirley without Shirley. Uh, one of my favorite elements, and I'll go back to the Lenny and Squiggy character, was their entrances. They had these wonderful entrances and it was usually set up by Laverne and Shirley when they would say something that was less than pleasant, like looking in the fridge and going, what's that in the back? I don't know, it looks all greasy and hairy. And that's when Lenny and Squiggy would make their entrance with a hello from David Lander. The only time that they entered without the hello was in a very special episode. I will not give away the spoiler, but it starred a very young, unknown actor named Ted Danson. But anyway, uh, both Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley are currently on MeTV. You can see them every Sunday night. Uh, they are a master class in the art of physical comedy. I would put them, again, with uh, Lucy and Ethel or uh, even John Ritter's work on Three is Company. It really made Tuesday nights when you were a kid. If you have thoughts, ideas, favorite episodes, put something in the comments below. I would love to talk about Laverne and Shirley or the other shows as part of that Happy Days franchise. Again, you can listen to me on TV Confidential or read my blog, childoftelevision.blogspot.com. I'm Tony Figueroa. Stay tuned.